Hi, this is Zach May with the US Chart Breakers here at Zach's Traders Cafe for Thursday, the 8th of June. Starting off with the S&P, where there's been decent consolidation, basically holding the uh, gains of uh, last Friday. But still holding on to more than half of that, which is good. Uh, still above the gap as well, around 42.32. And uh, I suppose if there is a retracement, we're expecting 42.20.30 to be the... Uh, the low before a fresh attempt at the upside obviously it might just get away with it and go straight up but uh, 4360 the target there by the end of next month if we can remain above the uh, 42 20 30 area rising uh, 50 day moving average quite well and uh, we haven't been below that since uh, way back at the end of march so that's quite an achievement especially on dips so that does um, suggest that this is a strong market at least technically moving along to the stocks and uh, quite a few uh, jumping jelly beans today we've got uh, we're starting off with uh, avalo which um, has got this beautiful uh, uh, sort of rounded uh, formation here this uh, base that it's been building at uh, after the uh, the bear trap below two dollars uh, bouncing off a rising 50-day line or above a rising 50-day line tends to be very bullish as we're seeing with the s p at the moment and uh, above the 200-day line at four dollars looking for as high as five dollars forty by the end of next month at the top of that broadening triangle from the end of January. Only back below $3 really uh, suggesting that uh, this is a false dawn. On to a stock which is new to us here. It's uh, Bridger Aerospace and uh, here rising trend channel there from uh, the uh, Beginning of uh, March, top of the channel, they're heading for $12, which we're looking for by the end of next month, especially after the latest break of the 200-day uh, moving average around $7.90. And uh, really, while we're above that uh, neckline resistance around seven fifty-six dollars uh, from back in May, looking for that $12 mark to be hit over the coming weeks. Moving along to stock, which uh, is also uh, a new one for us. Uh, we've got uh, Check Cap. And uh, here you can see that uh, we've broken, we've also broken neckline resistance in this case uh, around uh, $2.16 from uh, the uh, early part of last month above that. Looking for a uh, March resistance line projection as high as $4.50 by the end of next month. Uh, initially hoping to fill that gap up to $3, which was left, uh, the gap down that was, which was left uh, from the uh, end of March. And uh, as I said, looking like a decent W-shaped reversal there for check cap uh, another newbie is uh, on its way and uh, here it's uh, uh, farm farmer brothers and uh, here you can see there's just been a massive gap to the upside that it's actually a like bear trap island reversal so uh, we gapped down back in may and gapped up massively this month it's good that we have an anchor there on a potential long at two dollars 75 at the uh, 50 day moving average above that we're looking for the shares to hit the top of that broadening triangle from march as high as four dollars 65 by the end of next month. In fact, there's another gap there from February. Higher than that at $5, but uh, let's uh, just go for the uh, the lower target first while we're above that 50-day uh, line. And one of the uh, meme stocks is next, uh, GameStop, which uh, did rather well uh, during the pandemic. It might start doing rather well now as well. We've broken through the 200-day moving average. It took a while, it took a couple of weeks to do that, but the 200-day line now at uh, $23.00. Let's say $23.20 above that. We're looking for the top of that rising trend channel from the beginning of the year as high as $32 to be hit as soon as the end of next month. If you're cautious, you might want to wait for a break of that $27 peak that we had back at the end of March. But it looks as though with that solid break of the 200-day line, the shares are finally on their way. Another new stock, and let's see how far this takes us, MGO Global. Uh, interesting uh, uh, basing that the shares have had, an extended base there, but we've broken again this uh, neckline resistance. In this case, both neckline resistance, uh, double neckline resistance and resistance on the way down around $1.80. Above that, we're looking for as high as $5.40 over the next uh, one to two months. Um, but obviously, we need to hold above those two peaks in order to do that. Uh, below that would uh, uh, negate the potential um, idea of a big move higher. Plug power, a regular here, and uh, here we're seeing that uh, the shares are making progress since, in the sense that uh, we've broken above the 50-day uh, moving average uh, currently around the uh, $9 level. 
Above that, we're looking for the stock to uh, get to the top of that broadening triangle from the end of March, as high as $13 by the end of July. Let's see if uh, the break of the 50-day line will finally get the shares on the move in a meaningful way. Next up, a stock which uh, I've been trying to avoid for quite a long time. It, was, it seemed to be a bit of a falling knife. and In fact, it has been a falling knife, especially with that uh, horrible uh, dip, bear trap uh, reversal, bit of bear trap dip that we had back at the beginning of last month. But we've broken, again, neckline resistance around uh, the $8.50 level above that, looking for the uh, resistance line there from back in March at $11.00. Best case scenario target would be up to $18 and at the top of the rising trend channel from March. But I think uh, it would be probably wise to just target the $10 area or $11 area, in fact, initially, especially uh, on counting on the 50-day uh, line holding at $8.20. Just a few to go now. First one is uh, Roku. And uh, here, a nice uh, setup, uh, breaking the 200-day line. Hopefully, it will stay above that at uh, $60.00. And uh, we also had a, uh, a gap to the upside yesterday. Uh, so the uh, high of the previous day there at uh, $63.60 above that, we're looking for the top of a rising trend channel from the uh, end of last year, as high as $85 over the next one to two months. If you are cautious, I suppose you could wait for an end-of-day close above initial uh, April resistance at $68.35, but it looks as though with that gap higher, the shares are finally on their way for Roku. A couple of st uh, shares now. First one is um, Stitch Fix and another gapping situation. This, in this case, gapping through the 200-day line at $4 for 20. Above that, we're looking at the top of that rising trend channel from back in October as high as $7 by the end of next month. So a reasonable risk reward there in terms of not risking too much, maybe half a cent or so to try and make uh, at least a couple of dollars. Another new one to finish, and uh, here it is, um, Yext. Uh, here you can see massive gap to the upside, and uh, the uh, hope here is that we'll travel towards the top of a rising trend channel from October 2021. That is pointing to $18 as a target, maybe by the end of next month, and especially while we hold above uh, resistance, the old resistance area on the way down, call it $11.50 to be safe, as far as the... Uh, stop loss situation on that. That's it for me today. More updates tomorrow.